verse 5. This is the message we have heard from Him and proclaim to you that God is light and in Him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with Him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. Verse 7, But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus His Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make Him a liar and His word is not in us. Now let's proceed to chapter 2 verse 1. My little children, I am writing these things to you. And please take note of the following words. So that you may not sin. So that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. This is God's word. May His Holy Spirit teach us what His words mean. And may our reading and study of His word bring great benefit to our souls. You may be seated. So, the more I meditate on 1 John, the more I realize the connection between doctrine and life. Ang buot ko sa limon, ang mga doktrina mula sa Biblia, may practical consequences, Biblia. And if you really want to live a life that is pleasing to the Lord, hindi mo gidya pwede disregard ang doctrine or theology. So going back to verse 5, there is a great doctrinal truth being stated or taught in this verse. What is that great doctrine that God is like? But please take note, flowing from that great, great doctrine are practical implications or consequences. The fact that if we belong to the if God is light and if we belong to Him, if we belong to the light, then we should be walking in the light. Kaya kung basahon mo liwat ang inyong passage, kagpumalandungan mo yun, you will notice that if there is a contradiction between your way of life, in the sense that you are not walking in the light, ang wala siya, you cannot claim to really belong to God, to really have fellowship with Him. Ang kuntub lang na kung ang Diyos balaan, siya kapawa, pag kung ikaw nakabatong kay Kristo bilang imo personal naman luwas and you really belong to Him, then it is in a sense inevitable. Marisulta gidya ang righteousness kag holiness sa imo kabuhi if you belong to Him. That is why if you go, what is this, to verses, verse 6 for example, if we say we have, we have fellowship with Him, while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. Kuha niyo mga utod ang punto na dapat may, consip- may practical implication yan. Doctrine leads to practice. God is light. You belong to the light. Where is your walking in the light? Where is the practical proof? Those are the key words. Where is the practical proof that you really belong to God? That you have fellowship with Him. Makitaan pala sa kabuhin natin. So, by this time, siguro, I do not have to belabor the point. I am just trying to show you the connection between truth and life. Between doctrine and practice. If there is no consistency or harmony between our claims and our, our conduct, then there is something wrong. We are only fooling ourselves. Amo na naging humble dere, balik kita sa chapter 1, Verse uh, 6, no? We lie, kita. we do not practice the truth. Which implies that the truth should be practiced. Okay, let us proceed. Amo lang na ang preliminary point na gusto ko ihatag sa inyo. Nga truth should lead to practice. Truth and life, doctrine and life, they're very much connected. Okay, so going back to one of our main themes, naging tunaan natin 
during the past few weeks, during the weeks na ginatunan ta ng passage na ini, we pointed out that it is very necessary, if you really belong to the light, that you should walk in the light. In other words, you should be holy. You should live a holy life. Because our light is actually, what is this? A metaphor for holiness. Magsiling ka God is light, it simply means God is holy. Kaku magsiling ka, we should walk in the light, it simply means we should live holy lives. Pero, if you recall, humble dere, if we walk in the light, then the, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus His Son cleanses us from all, from all sin. May implication na din. Nga i-mentionar, nga ang dugo ni Cristo, nagahuga sa aton. It means, kanina i-mention kung word ko, nga consistency, di ba? Hambal ko, if we claim to have fellowship with God, dapat ang conduct ta, consistent with our claims. Pero di rin naman niya, ang tudlo sa Biblia, if we are really walking in the light, dapat may transparency. Consistency, transparency. Because the truth about us is this. Even though nga anak magkita sa ginoo, we are not yet perfect. And if you are really walking in the light, dapat honest ka sa ginoo. What does it mean to be honest to God? To be honest with God? It means, gina-admit mo kung, naka, kung nakasala ka. In other words, a person who is self-righteous, na hindi niya mga ako nga nga may arak pa siya kasawayan, nga hindi, daw, daw ginaplastar niya, blaka ginapresentar niya ang kogalingon niya as if he were perfect. That is a person who is not walking in the light. Kaya ang, tud- ang tao nga tutuod nga nag-fellowship sa ginoo, kag nag-walk sa kasanag sa ginoo, he's honest with God, he's transparent with God about himself. He does not pretend to be something that he is not. We are not yet perfect. So that means, if we walk in the light, kag it ang sanginoo everything about us because light makes everything visible, di ba? Light makes everything visible. It ang sanginoo kung anong tagipusuon, nga aras tagipusuon natin, then it follows na dapat honest kita, we should admit to God our sins. Kag dira kasunod ang verse 9, if you remember, Medyo malawig-lawig lang ni nga background kay tumudugay naman ta wala nakatuon sa first John. I have to review with you what we learned before. Okay. Diri masulod ang verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Kit anyo nga din mentionar ni Jan nga ang point niya bala nga if you're walking the light, you have to confess your sins because we're still sinning. Okay? And na mid na ya, it's really very good and in fact essential, necessary that we confess our sins because that's the way to restore fellowship with God. That's the way to experience God's forgiveness, God's blessing. In other words, if we do not confess our sins, the more na hindi ka mabatyagan ng presensya sa ginoo, the more nga malayo siya sa aton, Brethren, let us not pretend to God that we are perfect and righteous. And ang isa pag let us not pretend to one another nga, ako ya, wala ko ya sala, I'm so, I'm a very good Christian. Ang implication there is that we should be humble. Humble enough to admit and to be transparent that even though I'm a Christian, I'm striving to grow in the Lord. The fact is, di ba hambal ni James? In many things, we still offend. Oh, I do not know how honest we can be. But look at ourselves. Di ba la? Kadamo pas ang kasawayan sa aton kabuhi. Eh si James, wala. Ini nagsulod lang sa mind ko, but I remember. Eh di ba lang mo, kung Christian ka, din bago ka sa ginoo, there are so many things nga nga din bago sa ginoo sa kabuhi mo. But there are still a lot of things na dapat baguhon mag Yapon. Kag si James, ginmensyonar niya rin niya, ang pang. Ini digression lang niya. But I notice, many Christians, because they have experienced the grace of God, ang ila mga bisyo, ginpayaan din nila. 
nagtarong man dito. Grasya sa ginoo mo. But that one thing nga po dahil gibagpohon is the sins of the tal. I'm just using that as an example to prove nga we really need to confess our sins every day. Kung wala na malanggit kita ng kakasala sa mga bisyo and all, may harap pag niya bilhin niya. Di ba? And especially when it comes to the sins of the tongue. I, I'm, I'm mentioning that because of the biblical basis na dimensional na ni James. Sa tanan sang mga, sa tanan sang mga kasalanan nga nabilhin sa kabuhin ng Kristuhan noon, ang mga kinayagin mentional niya. Maybe because it is the most difficult sin to get rid of. Do you agree? Oh, may, at least may <laughs> Anyway, the point is, we are not yet perfect, we still sin. Pero manami isang promisa sa 1 John 1.9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Kaya kinahala, nung gina ito, nanginig ang promisa, because I don't believe anyone will disagree with me. We sin every day. If not in deed, if not in action, in word and in thought. Kagang ginoo is remember he just the, he not only looks at the external actions, he also looks at the condition of the heart. Even if you do not translate your thoughts into action, pero makita sa ginoo nga uh, your heart is wrong, that is already a sin that needs to be confessed and that needs to be cleansed because God looks at the heart. So, wala na naguro dibate, parte sina. We need this promise. Kagkatahong sa promisa, kag praise the Lord for 1 John 1.9. If there is one verse in the Bible that I, that I make use of every day, it is this verse. Kagtanan kita guro, we'll agree with that. In our personal experience, amo maling gila, sight din nato nga verse when we pray. Why did I say that? Because I notice almost every Christian when he or she prays, ara gila yang Lord, please forgive us our sins. Oh. Now, having pointed out the faithfulness of God in forgiving our sins, kad to nakita sa aton main point for this afternoon. Verse 2, uh, the verse 1 of chapter 2. Anong hambal da? My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. Dira lang tanay. Dali lang git. Ano na isuntang versikulo? Mamangkot kita. Nga ginahambal ni Dijan. Luwa tong tong ginahambal niya. Mga pinalangga ko ng mga kabataan. Ining mga butang din sulat ko ang tinutuyo ko para hindi ka mo magpadayang sa kasalanan. Question! Why did he say this? What caused him to say this? And I believe it's 1 John 1.9. Because ang 1 John 1.9, kung tiga at tagipusuon mo, you can abuse that verse. Are you listening to me? You can abuse that verse. And in fact, many Christians are doing that. Hambal nila, ate, Kung mag-confess man lang po galit sa ginoo, patawaron niya ako at kasalanan, pakasalaan mo lang patudo. Anyway, sigurado naman nga patawaron niya ko kay faithful and just siya. And I believe si John, he anticipated that. Para it crossed the mind of John, the apostle, when he wrote verse 1 of chapter 2, he was thinking about the fact that some people are liable or bound to abuse 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And to prevent that, para klaro, bala, nga hindi na mong boot niya silingon, hambal niya, my little children, ginsulat ko ni, hindi para magpadayon ko mo sa kasalanan, but the reverse, the reverse. I wrote these things, in fact, ginsulat ko ni 1 John about God's grace, God's forgiveness, not to encourage you to sin, but to prevent you from sinning. Basahong kuliwat ang, first, ang verse 1 sa chapter 2. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. And in fact, that is the title of our message or devotional for this afternoon. So that 
you may not sin. Okay, before I go on, balik kita sa verse 1 sa chapter 2. Please take note of the words, my little children. Katahom sa ina ang mga pulo. Ginitabig ni John, ang mga ginasulatan niya, the people to whom he was addressing this let, his letter, he called them my little children. And this is very significant. Hindi lamang nga naghambal siya children, naghambal siya little children, dali lang yun ha? Little children nga ah, because at the time he wrote this, he was already then old. So this son, may, tungod he was already very old, ang paglantaw niya sa mga ginaad, sa mga, sa iya mga addresses, they're like little children to him. But this is a term of endearment, and we know that, kaya naghambal siya, my little children. Okay, basi mo, ang mo, anong significance sila yung my little children? It means, sang naghambal siya na hindi ka mo magpakasala, he was saying that out of love. Dina, dina encourage ko kamo nga hindi ka mo magpatayon sa kasalanan because I love you. You are my little children. I have deep affection for you. I do not want you to continue sinning. I don't want you to backslide because I love you. Okay. Now that that is out of the way, at klaro para sa aton nga this is, this injunction ni John is born out of love, let us now establish the connection between 1 John 1.9 and chapter 2, verse 1. Naghambal kita nga at the promise of God's forgiveness can be abused. Pero hambal ni John, and listen to this carefully, because we are trying to understand how the mind of John, as inspired by the Holy Spirit, is working. How can John say, that the promise of God's forgiveness should lead you not to sin. Ang iba niya, ang ila pa minsan ron, tungod ang ginoo, patawar ron, yung magpugya ko, bisan magpakasala ko, kundi pakasala ng tatudo. Ang muna yung dalagan sa utok nila. Pero ang dalagan niya sa utok ni John Balistad, tungod ang ginoo, maluloy on. Tungod din patawad niya kita, kaghanda siya magpatawad, Instead of sinning, all the more, hindi kita dapat magpakasala. And this is what, in connection with that, amo ini ang hambal sang Romans chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. If you have your Bibles with you, basahon ko na lang ha. Romans chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Ang paminsaro ni John ang unik. Pamuyang din ang paminsar nyo na tuwad ang ginuho, faithful sa pagpatawad, mapakasala pa dito mo. Do you not know that ang grasya sa ginuho na ginpakita sa inyo should motivate you na palanggaon mo pagit siya kayo naging I don't gagulaan ko words to express this. Let me just use the words of the Bible. Uh, go to Romans chapter 1 Pamalandungan ta ni Tudo Romans chapter 2 verse 4 O basahan ta niya And I pray that Lord will help us to really absorb this verse Do you presume on the riches of His kindness and forbearance and patience not knowing that God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance. Let me repeat, repeat that. Gina take mo for granted ang grasya, kagkaayos ang ginoo? Wala kabala kabalo nga ang kaayos ang ginoo? Dapat amo pa ning magtulod sa imo nga magbago? Nga maghinulsol? Ano klase nga kakiwi sa gina nga paminsaron nga tungod ang ginoo maayo kag nagapatawad, the more niya mapakasala. The more niya nga i-disobey mo siya. Tumasala, di ba lang? Are, are you following? Why abuse the grace of God when in fact He's being gracious to you? It does not make sense. Amo na ang argument ni John. The reason why you should not sin when God is faithful to forgive you, the reason why you should not sin 
when God is gracious to you because His kindness is supposed to lead you to repentance and change. There. That's the simple message for this afternoon. Now, let us reflect on ourselves. Subong na nabatian ta ang argumento ni John when he says, I write these things, including 1 John 1.9, so that you may not sin. Kaya hey, dapat yan may application, di ba? Ang question ko sa ato namun eh, if we are honest with ourselves, why is it that in spite of the grace of God, naging bubo niya sa atong tabuhi, nagapadayon kita sa pagpakasalam? And the reason, and the answer to that, I think, is because we have forgotten that the kindness of God is supposed to lead us to change and repentance. Ang promisa sa 1 John 1.9 is not meant to encourage you to sin. It is supposed to motiv- motivate you not to sin. Kag para masimento, tagid ni ang ini nga kamaturan, let me give you some reasons para para magdulot, git bala, let me give you some reasons why we are not supposed to sin. Although, ina nga, ang ina nga punto, daw galibugulo ko, kinanglanon pa na bala i-prove. Kinanglanon ko pa na nga i-prove. Sa inyo nga dapat, hindi kita magpakasalak. Di bala, obvious na na. But just to make sure, nga klaro git ang punto. Why should we not sin? Number one, because it contradicts Christ's purpose in dying for us. It contradicts Christ's purpose in dying for us. Pasaha ba lang 1 John chapter 3, verse 5, that's on verse 8. 1 John chapter 3, verse 5, then verse 8. Here is what the Bible says. You know that He appeared in order to take away sins. And in Him there is no sin. He appeared in order to take away sins. He died so that He can save you from sin. The reason, o oh, katuta sa verse 8 sa 1 John chapter 3, ah, the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. In other words, ginluwas ka sa gino, oh, si Kristo Isus nagkari, nangin matay sa cross, ginluwas ka nga para gubon ang mga binuhatan sa kaaway sa inyong kabuhi. To destroy the works of the devil. And then you will reconstruct the works of the devil in your life. He died God, to destroy those works and then you will re-establish them. Does not make sense. It's illogical. The Son of God appeared to destroy the works of the devil. So why are you doing those works? Again, you are contradicting the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Number two, are, this is also very important. We should not sin as Christians because it weakens our love for God and our spiritual lives in general. Every time we commit sin, our love for God decreases. Magmabatsyagan mo na. Magmabatsyagan mo na. Magpakasala ka. Magmabatsyagan mo na nga ang ginuodong nagpapalayo. And my question is, if that happens, how can you be happy in the Christian life? Kaya ang Kristuhanon can only be happy in God. Bisan ang hon niya kabalik sa kalibutan, he will never find happiness again in the world. Kay, not, he, he, will, he already tasted the goodness of God mo. Ang guasa na, wala ka na pasaduan. Because you sin, and because tigaan ang tagipusuan mo, hindi ka makabalik sa gino. Kay, nadula ang fellowship niyo. Ang heart mo, ang love mo para sa yado, nag man, nag man. Hindi ka man kabalik sa kalibutan. Din ka sumong. Huwag ka pa sa tuwan. Kaluluway ka git. Kaluluway git ka. That is why sin is very dangerous. Aring hambal sang 1 John chapter 2.15. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. The teaching here is, every time we sin, ang gugmata sa ginoo nagabugnaw gidya can we afford to do that as i said ha wala ka na yang pasaduan as a christian you cannot find joy in the world testing e bala backslide bala testing e no matter how much you try to find enjoyment in the world kung tutod ka nga christian 
you will never find happiness in the world ever again. Every time you backslide, every time you commit sin, you might enjoy the pleasures of sin for a moment, but pagkagabi, after the party's over and all that, konsyensya mo bothers you, and you remember the joy you had in the Lord. So, trap ka, wala, wala ka pa sa tuwan. That is what sin does. That is why the second reason is very important. My little children, I write these things to you so that you may not sin. Because if you sin, your love for God decreases. The love of the Father is not in Him. And when that happens, you will have no joy at all. No joy in the Lord. No joy in the world. Miserable. That is what your state will be. Number three. Ano pag itang isa ka reason why we should not sin? Are goro pa mati ano gid ni Mahio? Because it can lead to sickness and death. Na siguro I have caught your attention. Ha muna, is there a verse in the Bible that teaches that? Yes, by the way, don't get me wrong. Bago ko basahon ng bersikulo, please just be aware that not all sicknesses and even death are the result of sin. Huh? I am not saying <laughs> kung magmasakit ka, it's always the result of sin. Kag kung mapatay ka, the, I, I'm not saying that. Huh? But I am saying that when you sin, it may be that God will discipline you for your sin by causing you to become sick or even by taking away your, your life. Grabe, huh? Is there a verse in the Bible which teaches that? Okay. 1 John chapter 5. Verses 16 to 17. First John chapter 5, verses 16 to 17. If anyone sees his brother committing a sin not leading to death, he shall ask and God will give him life. To those who commit sins that do not lead to death. Okay? May mga kasalanan nga wala nagaresulta sa kamatayon. Ang understanding ko dire, physical death. In other words, there are sins that can only lead to physical sickness. Are you following? And if you pray for that person, God will restore him back to life in the sense nga i-restore niya iya good health. But please take note. There is sin. Are you in the verse which I cited? Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> Where are we? There is sin that leads to death. I do not say that one should pray for that. There is sin that leads to death. Even if you're a Christian, kay ti, hambal niya da kagina, if anyone sees his brother. Okay, I, I admit nga may controversy sa pag-interpret sini, but the interpretation I gave you is very possible. Okay? There is sin that leads to death. And I believe that uh, this has happened to Christians, some Christians. Hindi, hindi ko na lang pag i... I'll not go into that. Just be aware that there is a verse like this in the Bible. The Lord might shorten our lives if we backslide and commit a sin that leads to death. Whatever that sin is, wala in hatag, wala in mentioner specifically, But this should be enough to make us fearful and afraid. Some verses in the Bible are there to make us afraid. And that is a right kind of fear. There is a sin that leads to death. That's on in 1 Corinthians 11, verses 29 to 32. Who's putting verses in the screen? 1 Corinthians 11, 29 to 32. Iniya parte ni sa Lord's Supper, but the principle is still the same. That sin can lead to death. Sin can lead to judgment. Even if you're a Christian. Please do not think that just because you're a Christian, you are exempt from the chastisement of the Lord. Ha? Ang akong nga na precisely because you are God's child, all the more He will chastise you. Because you are His child. And sometimes, listen to this, the chastisement can involve death. Oh, Who, where are we? For anyone who eats, and then First John, and then First Corinthians, chapter 11, verses 29 to 32. First Corinthians, 
chapter 11, verses 29 to 32. Okay, are we there? Let's wait for it a bit para kita nungit sa, sa screen and we can really drive home the point. Is it there? 29. Yes. Okay, pasawad ko lang anay, then it will be put on the screen. Anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. The context here is about eating and drinking the Lord's Supper unworthily. In other words, bala nagparte, which reminds me, kadalikado, bali mag Lord's Supper, no? Kay kung ang heart mo hindi insakto, can you just partake of the Lord's Supper, but there is hatred and bitterness in your heart, you are drinking and eating judgment on yourself. Oh, now look at the verse. Whoever eats and drinks without recognizing the body, eats and drinks judgment on himself. This is why many are sick and ill among you, and many have fallen asleep, which simply means many of you have died. Why? Because they committed the sin of drinking and eating the Lord's Supper unworthily. I'm focusing not on the specific instance, but on the general principle. Verse 31, If we were properly evaluating ourselves, we would not be judged. You mean, Brother Dennis, that Christians can still be judged? Yes, in terms of chastisement in this life. Of course, since you are saved and the Lord has cleansed you, the Lord, of course, makes you secure eternally. Okay. But, kung hindi ka gidya magsunod sa iya, although in your heart, if you're really a Christian, may ara gidya nagpabilin ng holiness sa heart mo mo. Pero, some, how do I say this? Some children are spoiled. Kamo na lang na. That's the best way to, to, put, to put it. Even though they have experienced the goodness of the Lord, and you know what the Lord will do because He loves you? When we are judged, we are disciplined by the Lord so that we might not be condemned with the world. Don't aklaro mo na sa verse 32, my brothers and sisters? Don't aklaro mo na when we, we, kita, Christians, are, ano mo, judged, we are disciplined by the Lord. And if you go back to the previous verse, verse 30, that discipline, that judgment of Christians involves sickness and death. If you do not properly evaluate yourself, you will be judged. Kung hindi ka mag-repent, hindi ka magbagmo, pakatiga ka, padayon ka lang yapon sa imo backsliding, even though you are a true Christian, the Lord will not sit back and relax. He will take action. He will judge you. Why? so that we might not be condemned with the world. Which is a simple way of saying, para hindi kaya madala sa condemnation sa kalibutan. In other words, you're still saved. Pero hindi ko na lang naya pagpadalumon. Okay, let us end. Ang ending naton ari di sa 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. We already said na ang purpose ni John is for you not to sin. Ang question is, what happens if you continue in sinning? Kung tutuod kaya ang anak ng Diyos, the Lord will take action. He will judge you, discipline you, chastise you. He might even take away your life para hindi ka magpadayon sa pagpakasala. But please take note, hambal din eh, ito sa lao, Second Corinthians. <laughs> sige, sige, karon na lang. 1 John chapter 3 verses 8 to 9. Ang first, ang Second Corinthians 13 verse 5, naghahambal, you should examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Dapat, you know, ako I believe in eternal security. I believe that if you are truly saved, hindi ginaya madula ang kaluwasan mo. Pero kapati, ibang ko, kung tutuod kaya ng Christian, may pagbago gina niya. Kahit bisan gradual, bisan pa nga, hindi immediate ang, ang visible results, there should be results. There should be change. Pero, pero, kung wala gina, 
ebidensya. No change. Continuing to sin. Habitual sinning. Wala gidya remorse. Wala gidya repentance. Hard-hearted yapon. This is now the last reason why you should not sin. Kag ini siguro kita kakululbaan. But I'm just trying to faithfully preach the word of God. Do you know what the Bible says? And why we should examine ourselves whether we are really saved? The one who commits sin. Sa translation nga ginagamit po, the one who makes a practice of continuing to sin. In other words, I am not, I am not talking about individual acts of sin. I am talking about, or the Bible is talking about, a habitual lifestyle. In other words, ang bisa naghambal siya nga nabato niya na si Jesus Christ, pero wala ni siya pagbago. Wala ni siya. Ibidin siya. Naluwas siya. The one who commits sin or makes a practice, a habitual practice of sinning without repentance, without remorse, is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. The Son of God was revealed for this purpose, to destroy the works of the devil. Everyone who has been born of God does not sin or does not uh, continue to practice sin or habitually practice sin because his seed remains in him. He is not able, ang ako na lang version gamiton ko, hey, no one born of God makes a practice of sinning for God's seed abides in him. He cannot keep on sinning because he has been born of God. Ang matutuod ng Christian, bisan pa nga makasala siya because he is really a child of God, kag ang Holy Spirit ara siya, kag ag- ang seed of God ara siya, he will always repent. Mabangon ginaya, mahinulsol ginaya, mabalik ginaya, and by God's grace, he will continue to walk with the Lord. Amo na iya ang karakteristics ng tutuod ng Christian. Pero kung wala gidya ebidensya sa pagbago, wala repentance, wala remorse, tig-amang yako ng tagay-pisuon, habitual lifestyle sin, then the frightening conclusion is this. You might not have, you might never have been saved in the first place. So this is the fourth and final reason why you should not sin. Because if you continue to sin carelessly without remorse and repentance, the danger is you might never have been saved in the first place. You don't belong to God. You belong to the devil. Medyo frightening ang aton nga mensahe subong nga hapon. And that is why I said, you should examine yourselves. Pero ang mga klase pa lang ang mga versikulo sa Biblia, tiara ko na, ara siya sa Bible. Hindi mo man siya ma-disregard, tiara siya. Kaginbutang man as ang Holy Spirit sa Biblia para sa aton. So that we will take heed of this teaching of the Lord. The one who continues to practice sinning is of the devil. He's not of the Lord. He's of the devil. Kung lagi pagbago, Habitual lifestyle of sinning, no repentance, no remorse, he's of the devil. How does that apply to us? Hambal sa ngimbasa ta, examine yourself. Pero, para hindi man kita tanan mga kulbaan git, nga tututudo, please remember nga John did not stop here. Sa next Sunday na niya, basi kulbaan ka mo, nga palawigon ko pag ini. Hambal din sa verse 1, sang chapter 2. My little children, I write these things to you so that you will not sin. But if anyone sins, we have a defense attorney. Amo nang bot silingon sang advocate. We have a defense counsel with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. In other words, do not sin. Amo nang mensahe. But if you sin, kung to do kaya nga Christian, don't lose hope. Don't be discouraged. There is someone who will lift us up. Even if we sin, provided nga may repentance, kag-demorse, kag-tutuo, kag-idiyang anak, sang ginoo. Are we clear on the message? Do not sin. That is the command. That is the message. So that you may not sin. But at the same time, in case you fall, don't be discouraged. We have an advocate. 
Next Sunday, God willing, if I am still the one who will be preaching next Sunday, I will explain to you the meaning of this truth that Jesus Christ is our advocate. This is something special for me. Kaya ang word nga advocate reminds me of a lawyer. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, sa emo warning para sa amon nga dapat hindi kami magpakasala kay ka delikado gid if we do so even if we are Christians because you love us if we sin and backslide you will surely discipline and chastise us you will surely judge us even to the extent of taking away our lives if you think that that is the right thing to do So ang pangamuyo ko gid dinoo nga ang ini nga mensahe will really sink into our hearts. There is really a place for healthy fear, O Lord, in the Christian life. Help us, Lord, nga makulbaan kami sa insakto nga pamaagi. By the power of your Holy Spirit. I also believe, O Lord, that the fruit of the Holy Spirit is not only peace and joy, but it is also fear and reverence for you so that we will not what is this treat you lightly or take you for granted ang natun-an na mong subong hapon is that your kindness is supposed to lead us to repentance your grace is supposed to lead us to change and to be serious about holiness Gina-confess na mong gino, kagina-ako na mong. We have failed so many times. Thank you, Lord, that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Salamat din gino sa imo faithfulness and promise that He will really cleanse us and you will restore our fellowship with you. But at the same time, O Lord, help us that we will not abuse your grace. Help us that we will not just you know, be encouraged to continue sinning just because you're faithful, but instead help us to be all the more motivated not to sin precisely because you are gracious. Do you not know your word says that the kindness of God is supposed to lead you to repentance? Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for the presence of each and every one. May you be, may you continue to be glorified in everything we do. In Jesus' precious name.